Hello, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to this, your Two White Muslims show. Normally, I'd be saying, it's Wednesday, it's six o'clock. Today I'm saying, it's Eid, <laughs> it's Eid. So we'll begin by doing this. Assalamu Alaikum. Warakbatullahi. Wabarakatuh. My name's Junaid Rahim. My name's Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And together we're affectionately known as the two white Muslims. We're joined by our beloved brother and colleague, Khorsa Tai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On this very, very special Eid broadcast. So we hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed your, uh, your trip to the masjid this morning. You've done your Eid prayers. And now, let's be honest, you're eating. <laughs> You're eating. What's, what's, got, what's got two thumbs and stuffed his face this morning? This guy. <laughs> Drinking coffee just for the fun of it. Just for the fun, just because you can. Just because you know it won't give you a headache anymore. Absolutely. Uh, because you can, you can drink water. <laughs> Subhanallah. You yeah. know, the significance, the significance of Eid al-Fitr and sustaining the good habits of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to explore all of this uh, throughout today's show. You know, the religious festival of Eid al-Fitr, which is also known as the festival of breaking the fast, is one of two holidays celebrated by Muslims all over the world. The other festival is known as Eid al-Adha. Mm -hmm. Now, Eid al-Fitr commemorates the end of the fasting month of Ramadan. It's a special and joyous occasion for prayers, for family get-togethers, gift exchanging and for charity. It takes place over one to three days beginning on the first day of Shawwal, the 10th month of the Islamic calendar. So while some Muslims observe other special days throughout the year, the two Eids are the holidays celebrated by the entire Muslim community worldwide. Whilst Eid al-Fitr marks the end of the fast of Ramadan, Eid al-Adha, the festival of sacrifice, occurs at the end of the annual pilgrimage season. This occurs a little over two months over the month of Ramadan. So subhanAllah, this day, uh, Eid and the Eid al-Adha are the two most important festivals for Muslims. People actually celebrate other times and other periods as well, but these are the most significant ones that we need to be uh, concerned about and celebrate, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, the Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar in which dates are calculated based on the phases of the moon. So each new month begins with a crescent moon appearing in the sky. Now, because the 12-month lunar calendar is approximately 11 days shorter than, than the Gregorian calendar, which is 365 days um, a calendar, Islamic months and holidays fall in various seasons depending on the, 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 the year. Okay, so uh, over the course of our lives, we're going to have the opportunity, inshallah, to experience fasting and celebrating Eid in winter, in spring, in autumn, and in summer. Now this in itself is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after a month of prayer, devotion and self-control, we'll be able to celebrate the accomplishment of our sacred duties during Ramadan with Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr is also observed to pay tribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bestowing us strength and courage during the month-long fasting period. It's also a day to show gratitude toward Allah following a month of reflection and contemplation. The holiday serves as a great reminder for Muslims to be grateful for what they have and to share with those who may be less fortunate than them. In many Muslim com majority communities, this day is taken as a national holiday and can last for three days. So this is the day when Muslims will gather and offer the Eid prayers. And a special khutbah is delivered after the Eid Salah by the Imam. So what are the recommended actions during the Eid <coughs> festival? After a month of reflection, prayer, contemplation, and spiritual renewal, the following are the recommended actions during the festivals of Eid. Well, the first one is to do your utmost. Do whatever you can to get to pray Fajr in congregation in the masjid, just as you will have been doing during the whole month of Ramadan. Let's not make Eid any exception. <laughs> yeah. And then perform ghusl. So have a full bath, a full shower before going for the Eid prayer and use a miswak to clean your teeth. 
Although Gussel is obligatory on certain occasions, it's strongly recommended at other times, such as the day of Eid. Doing Gussel in the morning before heading for Eid Salah and looking our best is one of the ways in which Eid is celebrated around the world. Ibn Abbas narrated, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to have a bath on the day, day of Fitr. This is recorded in Ibn Majah. Wear new clothes or the best clothes that you have in your home. If someone cannot afford to buy new clothes, then they should wear the best clothes available to them. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Our beloved Prophet would wear the best garments on the two Eids. And this is recorded in Bihaki. For men, it's recommended to put on nice scented perfume, if you have some. Just as our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, applied uh, atta, the, the perfume, on Eid day. Men are also encouraged to do the same, to create a pleasant aura, a, a pleasant fragrance in the masjid. And I have to I have to say, it is smelling rather nice in here today, would you agree? Yes, it is. <laughs> it really is. It's smelling mm. lovely. That. The combination <laughs> of these three is a <laughs> musk that should be, it should be, be it's a benefit to humanity. <laughs> Is it not? It should be bottled. It should be, it should, it should be bottled. <laughs> um, we should also eat something sweet, okay, uh, before <laughs> heading to the Eid prayer, preferably an odd number of dates. And asked me, I'll be pleased with him, reported, the Prophet would not leave out uh, on the day of Eid al-Fitr until he had eaten some odd number of dates. And this is recorded in Bakari. Walk to the masjid. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, from the Sunnah is to leave the, to the Eid prayer walking. And this is recorded in Tirmidhi. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ did not drive his camel to the Eid prayer. Therefore, it is better to leave the car at home and walk to the masjid. We should say the takbir when we're walking towards the masjid. The takbir on Eid celebration goes like this. It says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walilah ilhamd. Allah Akbar. Allah is the most great, Allah is most great, Allah is most great. There is no God except Allah. Allah is most great, Allah is most great. All praise be to Allah. Now each person individually should make this takbir because it's not established from the sunnah to do it in congregation. Hmm. We also pay the zakat al fitr at any time before your Eid prayer. The sooner the better so that the recipient can also celebrate their Eid. Zakat al fitr also known as fitrana, is about somewhere in the region of £3.50 per person and is compulsory for all members of the household, including children and the elderly. It cannot be made up for if it's neglected, so we need to get it in before our Eid prayer. Therefore, it's important to pay it as soon as possible. Many Islamic charities are able to distribute on your behalf as long as you pay on time. Also, Eid Salah must not be missed as it is a fundamental part of Eid festivities. As narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Apostle used to offer the prayer of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, then deliver the khutbah after the prayer. And this is recorded in Bukhari. Eid prayer consists of two rakah, the first containing seven takbirs and the second five. A khutbah sermon is conducted after the prayer has been completed. There are other reports about the number of takbis. Imam Ahmad, may Allah be pleased with him, stated, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ differed concerning the number of takbis, and all of the variations are permissible. And this is recorded in Ahmad. So therefore, it is recommended to follow your local Imam. There are no uh, prayers either before or indeed after the Eid prayer. Ibn Abbas said, the Prophet, peace be upon him, came out on the day of Eid of Fitr and prayed two rakat. And he did not pray anything before it, nor did he pray anything after it. And this is recorded in both Bukhari and Muslim. The Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, also states 
that it is best to offer Eid Salah in an open field, if at all possible. Now, I've seen this happen. I've got to say, when it I've happens, seen this all, all through the country. How cool is this? Question. Very difficult when Eid falls in winter. Yes. Because it's uh, you have very to clear the snow out. First. Very often, either snowy, <laughs> frosty, or, yes, or boggy, boggy with yeah, and yeah. very muddy. Dad, I've lost my shoe. But do you know what? When Eid falls during the summer periods, <sighs> it's a beautiful experience yep. to get outside and just pray out in the open. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, if you come late and you miss one rakat, then stand up after the imam finishes and pray whatever you missed. The Prophet peace be upon him said, "Whatever of the prayer that you reach, pray it." And whatever you've missed, complete it. If you miss the Eid prayer altogether and arrive while the Imam is delivering the khutbah, then sit and listen to him. After he finishes, then pray two rakah for the Eid prayer. There's no harm if you pray on your own or in congregation with a few who miss the prayer and also arrive late. I've seen this happen many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Where people uh, arrive late, and uh, I've seen it happen, where they've actually arrived uh, uh, late for the Eid prayer and being quite vocal saying why did you start without me? Uh, yeah I've seen that. <laughs> how, how dare you how, start the Eid start? prayer without me I mean, on time when <laughs> you said you would? Subhanallah, <laughs> subhanallah. If, if you fear being late set off earlier. Yes, if it's you're going to be upset with easy. them starting without you be on time. <laughs> of all the prayers this one should not be missed. It's yep. only once a year and it's fundamental that uh, in our scriptures state that you must attend the Eid prayer. If you're a believer, if you're a Muslim, you cannot miss it. Also, uh, take as, just, just, I'm very quick on that, as, as you know, as, 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 you know, um, in this great British Isle of ours, if it says Eid prayer is nine o'clock, what time would you expect Eid prayer to start? Nine nine if it said ten o'clock, what would you ex time would you expect Eid prayer to start? Ten o'clock. If it said ten thirty, what time? You see where I'm going with this? This is not a trick question, it's is it? It's not a trick question. <laughs> if it says nine, it's nine. Yeah. If it says ten, it's ten. It's not complicated. It's sad that we. Still you know who you are. <laughs> you know who we're talking to. It's, it's you sad. know. It's still sad that we still <laughs> we use standard Asian time rather than standard. Yeah. British, you know, GMT time, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. G uh, Greenwich Mean Time is GMT, yeah, and they use generous Muslim time yeah. for GMT. <laughs> yes, you know, not on Eid, it's not fair. Usually, it, it works out that uh, generous Muslim time is about half an hour behind. Yeah. So, you know, <coughs> d d use GMT in this yeah. country, get there on time, yeah. don't miss anything of your salah yeah. and then you can you can listen to the khutbah in yep. peace knowing that your salah is done and then you can enjoy the festivities after your eid salah yeah see everybody dressed up mm. see the kids running around yep. it's beautiful it's it fantastic also to take two different routes on your way to the eid prayer and then when coming back home take a different route as narrated by jabir bin abdullah may allah be pleased with him on the day of eid our beloved Prophet Sallallahu used to return after offering the Eid prayer through a way different from that which he went. And this is recorded in Bukhari. So we need to do the same as well. The reasoning behind this is so that on the Day of Judgment, the two paths will testify that you attended the Eid Salah. Just imagine, you attended the Eid Salah, but not late. SubhanAllah. You know, enjoy uh, delicious food. Mm -hmm. If you can, yeah, if, you, if it's available to you. Um, after returning from Eid prayers, have the food, that, that the best food that you can prepare. This is because it's one of the best ways that we can celebrate Eid. Mm -hmm. We've just fasted for, yep. uh, for a month. The best way to celebrate is to enjoy the food, not having to fast for, for that day. Yep. Um, uh, Anas radiallahu anahu stated that when the Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina, he saw that the people celebrated two specific days annually. So, the Prophet asked, what are these two days? And they informed him that these were days of celebration, of festivals from the era of the uh, Jali uh, Jaliya. Jahaliya. Jahaliya, sorry. <laughs> the age of ignorance, barbarism and unbelief in Arabia before the coming of Islam. So, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, indeed, Allah has replaced these days with days better than them, the day of Adha, and the day of Fitra. And this is recorded in Abu Dawood. Come on. <laughs> when everybody around you is celebrating yep. and you're not, yes. what does Allah do? Exactly. It gives you the celebration. 
and calls yeah. it Eid. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, it's just mm. perfect. Ah, amazing. So visit friends, visit family. Visit friends, family and neighbours has many rewards. Greet them with salam, wish them Eid Mubarak and share the joy of this auspicious day with them. This creates a bond between families and community. It brings unity to community. One of the things to remember for Eid Day is to make sure to visit those who are ill and the elderly. The Sunnah greeting that you shall be saying on Eid Day is Takbala Allah Minna Wa Minkum. May Allah accept from us the good deeds and also from you. The easy response to this is to say, Ameen. Ameen. <laughs> yes. Can I just I can manage that bit. Yeah, Mashallah. Can I just <laughs> emphasize uh, about this? Um, Mufti Meg makes it clear that there's no such thing as Eid Mubarak or Juma Mubarak. The first thing you should say is Assalamu Alaikum. Mm -hmm. And on the Eid day, Taqalabalallahu minna wa minkum. May Allah Ta'ala accept from, from good from us and, and, and you. This is, the, this is the best dua that you can recite. Mm -hmm. Eid Mubarak, you can do it afterwards, it's not a problem, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't be the first thing and ah. only thing. You should say Assalamu Alaikum because that in itself is a dua. So, about visiting the graveyard. Many people visit the graveyard to pay respects to those dear to them who have passed away. But this is not recommended by the Prophet ﷺ, as this is a day of joyous occasion. Therefore, it is better to visit the graveyard on other days. It doesn't mean that it's, it's haram, people do visit it, but it's a joyous occasion. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ said, use it as a joyous occasion. Go and visit the graveyard on different days. Perhaps on a Friday is a better day. Yeah. So, maintaining Ramadan. How do we do that? You know, once Ramadan has passed, it becomes more difficult to sustain the practices, the good practices that we adopt during the month of Ramadan. It becomes more difficult than in the month of Ramadan. However, if we treat Ramadan as the training ground for the rest of the year, then we're sure to want to retain some of the lessons and habits that we've developed in this beautiful month. Mm. So we often call Ramadan the reset button for your deen. So the question is, what can we do to sustain the good habits that we've created during this amazing period? Well, one thing we can do is continue to fast on Mondays and on Thursdays. We've had a good run at it, haven't we? We've done 30 days continual fasting. We've really got ourselves in the zone. So now just keep that going by fasting two days a week. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to fast on Monday and Thursdays. When he was asked about it, he said, the works of the servants of Allah are presented to Allah on Monday and Thursdays. This is recorded by Abu Dawood. He also said, on that day I was born and on it the revelation came to me. And this was recorded in Muslim. Also, if you can, fast on the six days of Sawal. It is narrated from Abu Ayyub, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, whoever fasts Ramadan then follows it up with six days of Shawwal, it is as if he has fasted for a whole lifetime. And this is recorded in Ibn Majah. Look at the rewards, mashallah. Therefore, try to fast six days during this period, just after the month of Ramadan. Also, during Ramadan, we as Muslims tend to dig into our pockets a little deeper in order to alleviate the suffering and the pain of, of poorer people. Mm -hmm. So why don't we continue to give charity after Ramadan? Keep the sadaqah following, uh, keep it flowing and reap the, the mental health rewards of giving. If you financially assisted disadvantaged families in Ramadan, why don't you continue to do so after Ramadan? The act of giving is extremely rewarding both <coughs> in this world and indeed the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains and Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills. And Allah is all encompassing and all knowing. This is the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 261. <coughs> also, don't neglect your prayers. Salah is like oxygen. After Ramadan, your quality and concentration might be reduced, and your enthusiasm to pray could be at an all time low, but never give it up completely. Because just as we need air to breathe and to survive, Salah is what you need to nourish your soul. This means all five daily prayers, Fajr and Isha included. 
because there is a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, wherein the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, no prayer is more burdensome to the hypocrites than the Fajr or dawn prayer and the Isha or night prayer. And if they knew their merits, they would come to them even if they had to crawl to do so. This is recorded in both Bukhari and Muslim. SubhanAllah. Just imagine, we would attempt to crawl to pray our Salah if we knew the benefits. And yet if we don't pray, we're inadvertently committing sin. We certainly don't want to wait, or don't want to be those described as hypocrites. Therefore, don't lose hope. Strive to get back to what you used to do in Ramadan. It's all right to feel low, just don't get disillusioned and led by the shaitan who will discourage you to not pray. We're very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we pray. The beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the closest the slave will draw to his Lord is when he's performing sujood, when he's prostrating. This is recorded in Muslim. So never abandon prayer, no matter what. Continue to read the Quran. So we've been really engrossed in it in the month of Ramadan because Ramadan is the month of the Quran. So continue reciting this, even if it has to be little. Consistency is more important, which, you are, which our beloved Prophet stressed. It's the Quran is a nourishment for the soul, the light for the heart, and guidance to the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, indeed, this Quran guides to that which is most suitable. Chapter 17, verse 9. So reciting the Quran is an act of worship. In it, there is healing for the hearts, light, and illumination for the blind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we sent down in the Quran that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe. And it increases the zalimun, i.e. polytheists and wrongdoers, nothing but loss. Chapter 17, verse 82. Thanks, Kosa. Now, uh, we're coming to a short break. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Kosa, or you, yeah. Junaid, <laughs> but I quite fancy a cup of tea. <laughs> Absolutely. So, we'll be back shortly after this break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.